God, He has given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and the free. the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 5. John 5. 
After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus, and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me, 
that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape, and ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? May God help us to be doers of the world. Amen.
thank you for this glorious day, the day of the Lord. We're asking, O oh Lord, that today 
you prove yourself faithful to everyone in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, the promises we reach, and even the ones we don't reach today, we pray that as you have a God who keeps covenant with your people, your promises will be yes and amen in every life in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you give us the grace and the strength, the faithfulness and the focus to keep the terms and the conditions of the covenant you have made with us through the Lord Jesus Christ and we pray our lives will be a satisfactory, progressive, fulfilling life in Jesus' name. Speak to your people one by one and let your word do good in every life today in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said another amen. amen. God bless you. You can see now today we are coming to an important subject. Important to the mind of God and important to every child of God. We are looking at Psalm 89. And I'm reading from verses 5, and se verses 5 to 7 and then verse 34. Well, I'm going to start with verse 34. In verse 34, it says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. The Lord knows everything He has said, all the promises He has given, and all the things, the provision he has made for every child of God from the beginning even to the very end. And he says, my covenant will I not break concerning my sins, concerning my children, concerning the church, concerning everyone that comes to the Almighty through the Lord Jesus Christ, he has a covenant. He has an agreement and he has a league. He has all this proposal he has made. And he says, my covenant is a so covenant. And there is no power in hell, on earth, in the forest, in the sea. There is no spirit that can tamper with the covenant of the Lord. When he makes a covenant, he watches over that covenant. And he says, as for him, he will not break the covenant. And there is no Satan, there is no evil spirit, and there is no demon that is mighty and powerful enough to break that covenant. And then he says, I will not alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Why? He thought through before he said those things. He planned everything. He knows the end from the beginning, from generation to generation, from eternity past unto eternity future. He knows what he wanted to do. And so there is no need to alter whatever he has said. He said, I am God. I change not. My proposals change not. My covenant changes not. And therefore he says, I will not alter the promise that has gone out of my mouth. I will not alter the proposal provision that has gone out of my mouth. I will not alter all the good things I said I was going to do. Neither will I alter anything that has gone out of my lips. Now, who did he say that to? That he will fulfill his covenant. Who was he talking about or referring to? Well, you understand, if you go back to the past, you must be thinking of Abraham. You must be thinking about Moses. You must be thinking about Israel and about David and about Noah and about all the worthies of old. He made a covenant with them and he never broke the covenant. But above all people, 
Christ Jesus came to this world and he had an agreement with the Heavenly Father and said, I'm going down to the earth. And then they had an agreement together. They had a covenant together. And the covenant is you make the sacrifice. And when you make the sacrifice, all the people that turn away from their sins and they believe in that sacrifice, I have a covenant with you and by extension with them and everything you have provided everything you will do i'm going to affirm that's why jesus was very sure and he said whatsoever you ask the father in my name i will do it and he will do it why because he has a covenant is the better covenant is the greater covenant is the everlasting covenant is the new covenant and he says that covenant i will not break no alter the thing that is gone out of my lips come back to verse 5 now in verse 5 and the heavens shall praise thy wonders O lord thy faithfulness also thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints in the congregation of the saints he makes the promise and then he says god is so faithful is the covenant keeping God and what he has said he will do, he must do he cannot fail, look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says God is greatly to be praised is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints the assembly of the saints, a special assembly is not an assembly of nominal Christians church goers the people who are Sunday, Sunday Christians, but during the week, all through Monday to Saturday, they don't remember the Lord. In their market, in their home, in their conversation, in their lifestyle, they do not remember the Lord. Sunday, Sunday Christians, not those words, the assembly of the saints. Those who are saints every time, they are saints at home. They are saints in the office, they are saints in the market, they are saints everywhere. And that assembly of saints, God keeps his covenant and is to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. Today we are looking at the scriptures concerning God's faithfulness in the congregation of the saints faithful to himself faithful to the covenant and faithful to jesus christ his only begotten son the final sacrifice and faithful to every member every child of god in the congregation of the saints in the assembly of the saints god's faithfulness in the congregation of the saints the three things we're looking at number one the finished sacrifice by christ you don't have to repeat it again you don't have to bring another sacrifice anymore but the sacrifice of jesus christ is full and final it is finished he said the final sacrifice by christ number two the faithful saints in his congregation already has mentioned his congregation the congregation of saints the assembly of saints and it is to them everyone in that congregation of the saints without exception he makes a covenant and he said that covenant i will not break and i will not alter i will not change i will not modify i will not subtract anything from that covenant neither will i add any other condition that i didn't put there before he says he is faithful to the congregation and then the saints in the congregation must be faithful to him as well look at number three the firm steadfastness to his covenant he is steadfast and he is firm and whatever he has ordained is going to fulfill the firm 
steadfastness to his covenant let's come to number one number one we're looking at the finished sacrifice by christ as you come to psalm 50 verse 5 psalm 50 verse 5 gather my sins together unto me gather 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 my sins together unto me there are people who are already wondering in this situation in which we are that COVID-19 has brought to place that people stay in their various houses isolated and then if their pastor wants to preach to them they will go online is that the permanent will and the permanent way of God? Can't the church forget about church building? Can't the church forget about camp ground? And then whatever retreat you want to have, whatever congress you want to have, and whatever situation you want to have, let the saints of God, the children of God, stay in their various places because now technology makes it possible that we can speak to everyone wherever they are. God says he knew technology will come. Technology is not uh, something that has taken God by surprise. And yet he says... I want the family to be together. I want the members of the family to come to me. There is no father who will abandon gathering the children together and speaking heart to heart with them, face to face with them, and give up and scatter his family into the hands of the media. But you know what God has said? He said, whatever the generation and whatever the time i want the congregation they must congregate together i want the assembly they must assemble together my says gather my says together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice he knew that christ will come from Genesis chapter 3, but 15, he had prophesied and proclaimed about what Christ will do at Calvary. So the sacrifice of Christ is not a surprise, it's not at an afterthought. Christ was sacrificed from the foundation of the earth. And so he says, to says their mind. And they gather together on the basis of the sacrifice of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that she may be a new lamb, as ye are on leaven, for even Christ a Passover is sacrificed for us is that sacrifice we're talking about and when he said it is finished the sacrifice was totally accomplished three things we're looking at number one our conversion to saints by the supreme sacrifice when we're converted we're converted to become saints by the supreme sacrifice of christ number two the conduct of saints was sure salvation sure salvation not a an imagined salvation not a salvation that you repeat i'm saved i'm saved i'm saved real salvation genuine salvation heaven saint salvation that the spirit of god bears witness in your heart you are born again the conduct the character the behavior of saints will show salvation number three the concourse are saints over submissive self we're coming to number one and it's the conversion to says by the supreme sacrifice already we have read that it says gather my sins my sins my sins you know god has the same standard 
all throughout all generations and all throughout all denominations when it says my saints it doesn't have a different standard for the saints of the first century and then the saints of the 21st century it doesn't have a standard for this denomination for saints and this other denomination if they're the saints of god they have the same standard and it says gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant by sacrifice look at hebrews chapter 9 Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 24, For Christ is not entered into at the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Look at verse 25, it says, Nor yet, that he should offer himself often, day after day, offering new, new sacrifice, or week after week, or year after year, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. But now in verse 26, he tells us, for then, must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, but now, this generation, but now, at this time, but now, once in the end of the world, once is done it, as he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. By the sacrifice of himself. That's what brings our conversion. That's what brings the new nature and the new life of the believer. It tells us in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. It tells us here, repent therefore. That's how you come into the covenant with the Lord. Repent, turn around therefore. Put away the past. Push away far away from you all the iniquities and all the transgressions of the past life it says repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when you come to the lord all the sins of the past are wiped out they are blotted out and there is no trace of the past sins anymore once the blood of jesus washes you and cleanses you and totally blots out all the sins all the transgressions all the iniquities everything that was wrong that you did in the past and he looks at you now as if you never sinned in your life clean and pure and white as white as snow without any spot without any stain and without any evil thing recorded against you it says that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord the times of refreshing the times of renewal the time of regeneration and the time of total renovation comes from the Lord in your life. That's the conversion he expects. And now you are converted to be a saint in the congregation of the saints. You are expected to be a saint in the assembly of the saints. What's our conduct? Look at number two. Number two is the conduct of saints with sure salvation. Those who are truly really saved, those who are truly really born again, and the work of grace has been established in their heart and in their life. 
the character they maintain by grace and the conduct they maintain by the helping hand and the washing and the cleansing hand of the Lord, the conduct and the character, the behavior that they have in um, Psalm 85, reading from verse 8. Psalm 85, reading from verse 8, I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. I will hear, you know, every time we have opportunity, whether it's Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or it's Thursday or Saturday, any day of the week that we have the chance to gather the saints together. The saints are coming from every direction and the mind and the heart and the purpose and the desire is that I will hear, I will hear what the Lord will speak for he will speak. Speak peace unto his people and to his saints. His people, his saints, they are the same. His saints and his people, he will speak peace unto them. But let them not turn again to folly. That is, will not turn back to folly, to foolishness, to filthiness, to transgression, to sin of any type. Because we are now saints and we live every time and every moment as saints of the Lord. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. We are reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. It says open your eyes of understanding and the eyes of your spirit. And see the direction the almighty God is going and then follow him. Him, follow him you cannot associate crime with God therefore if you are following God there will be no crime you cannot associate iniquity and evil with God if you are following him there will be no iniquity there will be no evil you cannot associate the depraved nature Adamic nature with the almighty God therefore if you are following him you will not allow the Adamic nature the depraved nature nature to operate in you be ye therefore followers of God as dear children look at verse 2 I'm sure you remember God is love that's why it says now if you are following God and God is love and walk in love as Christ also has loved us walk in love you're looking at God the Father and Jesus said whosoever seen me a sin the father and if you are following God and you say I don't know how God will act in this situation whosoever has seen Jesus has seen the father look at Jesus and walk as he walked and talk as he talked and live as he lived and help as he held and support as he supported and heal others as he healed others and do everything everywhere in the nature of Christ that is now given unto you and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor and then in verse 3 it says in verse 3 but fornication and all uncleanness all shades of uncleanness all sizes of uncleanness all appearance of uncleanness all uncleanness or covetousness let each not be once named among you as becometh saints it's talking about the conduct and the character and the behavior and the lifestyle of those who are saints of God. And then he says in verse 4, he says, Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, filthiness. And there are people that might uh, demonstrate uh, something uh, through their body language or through their dressing or through their language, obscene language, dirty language, foul, dirty, stinking language, or body language that makes people feel a kind of fleshly 
or make them think about filthiness, it says, as saints of God, as the people who are cleansed by God, as the people who have gone through the cleansing blood of the Lamb. And all that dirty language is gone, dirty dressing is gone, and the dressing that exposes your body to other people, all that is gone, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. Let's look at First Peter chapter 1, verse 14, as obedient children. Those are the children God loves and those are the children Christ praises the Lord for because the sacrifice of Christ has taken effect in their lives and because of that sacrifice of Jesus they become obedient children and as obedient children not fashioning yourself according to the former laws in your ignorance. There were times in the past you are ignorant and now that you are born again now that you are a child of god now that you are a sage and the light of the gospel has shone in your heart ignorance is no more there you know little children when you come to this world they're ignorant and because of that when they see the flame of a candle fire burning they want to grab it and touch it why they are ignorant but as they grow they grow out of that ignorance they do not want to touch fire anymore they do not want to put mud in their mouth anymore why because the ignorance of childishness is gone we as children of God as we come to the Lord now we're children of God the light has come revelation has come we have heard the word of God over and over now as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance then in verse 15 it says but I see which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner no exception the area of your life that you excuse from holiness in all manner of conversation at home husband and wife remember holiness at home parents and children fathers and daughters remember holiness at school in the place of work you are now children of god a child is a child of god every time a saint is a saint of god every time and he says because the lord who has called us is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation in verse 16 he says because it is written that's our labor find out it is reaching that's how you confront satan find out it is reaching that's how you plan your life it is reaching find out what you can sign what you shouldn't sign in your office on the basis of it is reaching find out how to get married find out how to conduct the wedding find out how to celebrate if you are celebrating anything make sure that you keep to as it is reaching because it is reaching be ye holy for i am holy be ye holy for i am holy look at number three here number three is the conquerors are saints over submissive selves conquerors i'm a conqueror i'm a conqueror you'll be a conqueror in jesus name and you know, if you look at Second Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 4, it says, No man that worries entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. No man that worries entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Are you conscious of that every time I am a spiritual soldier? I am not a civilian 
my life will not be careless my life will not be indisciplined my life will not be flabby and then i am a warrior I am warring against the flesh and I fight in the battle against Satan and I fight against corruption in the society. No matter what people around me, what they say, I am a fighter. I am a warrior. I am a soldier. And because of that, I put self under me. Maybe self has not woken up yet to realize that we're in a battle and we're fighting against the corruption of the world. Therefore, I send message to every part of my life to self, to the mind, and to the thoughts that you cannot allow those thoughts to fly up on a tangent. Everything must now be in control because I am now a soldier, a, a soldier, a, a soldier that is chosen by the Lord. And then in verse 5, it says, And if a man strive for masteries, that he is a person that looks at himself, and he says, I'm not going to remain at this low level all my life. I'm striving for the mastery. I want to be a master, a master, a master in everything I undertake. A master in character, a master in charisma, a master in conduct, a master in every area of my life. I do not want any area of my life to be like, well, you cannot control that. Just let it go as it is. It says, no, everything that comes through my life, I must be in charge. Satan will not be in charge of your life. The corrupt society will not be in charge of your life. You will be a master over everything in Jesus' name. If a man strive for the mastery, then he must be temperate in all things. Everything in your life, you are temperate and you are telling the Lord, I am going to be a master in everything. I pray the Lord will affirm that in your life in Jesus' name. Look at First John chapter 2 verse 14. First John chapter 2. We're looking at verse 14. It says, I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. And I write unto you young men because ye are strong. Look at this. And the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. I have overcome. I have overcome the wicked one that is waiting for your time of carelessness and is waiting for the time you will drop your shoulders and let down and allow Satan to have his way. No, he will not have his way in your life. In Jesus' name, you will always overcome. Temptation, you will overcome trial you will overcome and all the seducing spirits of the devil in the world trying to seduce you and make you to go into anything you regret about later in life you will overcome in jesus name you'll be a conqueror i will be a conqueror Ye, in all these things, we're conquerors through him who loved us and he gave himself for us. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, the faithful saints in his congregation. We're coming back to Psalm 89 and we're reading from verse 5. Psalm 89 verse 5, and the heaven shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Verse 6, in verse 6, for who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord, 
who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord. And then in verse 7, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. The faithful saints in his congregation, the congregation of the saints, the assembly of the saints. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the freed saints in Christ. We come to Christ and Christ sets us free. And all the chains that bound us, attaching us to the world, he breaks everything. And we are free. Number two, the faithful saints who continue. The faithful saints in continuation. They don't ever stop. They don't say the mountain is too steep. Therefore, I cannot go on. The road is so rough, so I cannot go on. They don't say the temptations are so fiery. I cannot go on. God brings something of heaven in their hearts. And because of that, they continue. I continue. I continue. You will not fade away like smoke in the middle of your journey in Jesus' name. The faithful saints in continuation. Number three, the flattered strangers under condemnation. Number one, number one is the freed saints in Christ. In Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 2. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. There are some people that do not understand the exposition, the revelation of the might of God. And so, when they are reading the epistle to the Romans, they come to chapter 7. They are stuck. They stay there. They do not understand. They just need to move to the next page and to the next level. And the power that sets us free comes into their lives. But they stay there in chapter 7. What I wanted to do, I could not do. And it's not my fault. It's the sin that abides in them. But no, as you come to chapter 8, and you meet Christ, the liberator. Christ, the emancipator. Christ, the one that sets us free. He says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Look at verse 3 there. He says, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh then in verse 4 it says that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but now walking after the Spirit, in Romans chapter 6, verse 18. Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 18. Being the made free from sin. That's what happens to a child of God when you come to Christ. Christ always does that faithfully. He doesn't say, I'll not do it for this, I'll not do it for that. He does it for everyone, made free from sin. He became the servants of righteousness. In verse 22, it says, But now, be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit on your unto holiness when he sets you free. When he breaks the yoke, when he breaks the bad habit, 
when he separates you from the past and separates the past from you. Here is what it does. It makes you bear fruit unto holiness and the end, the goal, the purpose of that everlasting life. In John chapter 8 verse 32. John 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. How do you understand that verse? If you are not free, you have not known the truth. You might have had messages. You might have had sermons. If you are not free, you have not known the truth. Free from sin. You know the truth about the Savior. Free from sickness. You know the truth about the great physician. Free from spirit, evil spirits, and Satan. You know the truth about our conquering deliverer. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If there is any bad habit that holds you captive, and you are not free, and you try and try, and you are not free, all you need to do is to go back to Christ. No more of him. I know the truth about him. I know the truth about his power. All power in heaven and on earth is given unto him. And when he sets you free, you are free. In verse 36, he tells us, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Remember Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he never overlooks, he doesn't block his ears to the cry of any captive that wants to be free. And once you call upon him, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. There is no partiality with God. Other people have come, and the Lord set them free. And the Lord broke every yoke in their lives. If you will come the same way they came, Coming with faith, nothing doubting. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Let's come to number two here. Number two is the faithful saints who continue. The faithful saints in continuation. In Romans chapter, in Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 19, now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Ye are no more strangers to the grace of God. No more strangers to the covenant of God. No more strangers to the provision of Calvary. Now, at this time that you have believed on the Lord, that you know that you are a member of the body of Christ, and you have been gathered together with the saints of God, and is fulfilling the promises in your life. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. What does that mean? Fellow citizens, the citizens have rights. And it is the right of the citizen. Members of the family and members of the household of God, they have rights. And it's for everyone. There is not uh, something here that God will say, this one is an older son, older daughter, I'll do it for you. But this one is a new son and it's a new daughter. I'm holding on. We have the same rights. We're not foreigners. We're fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And as you accept that and believe that and you continue, 
the promises of God, everything, everyone, without exception, will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. Even today, even today, every promise of God you are holding on to will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. But you know what? You have to wipe away those tears. You know, sometimes the tears make our eyes dim. We cannot see the promise. We cannot see the provision. We cannot see our entitlement. Wipe away the tears and understand uh, whatever I can get from God, you will get from God. You and I were fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. As God answers my prayer today, today, God will answer your prayer. Look at, look at Romans chapter 11, we're reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 11, we're reading from verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, then the law is also holy. And if the root be holy, then so are the branches. That means as Christ, the first fruit is holy. And then we are branches in the true vine. He is holy and we are holy as well. And then we have to continue. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, Behold therefore the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness if thou continue. If thou continue you will continue and as you continue goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life all right goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in his house forever and ever be it done in your life in jesus name toward you say toward me say toward me this afternoon goodness all this week goodness everywhere you go goodness if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou shalt be cut off I will not be cut off me I will not be cut off you will not be cut off in Jesus name look at number three here number three the flattered strangers under condemnation you know there are those who flatter themselves and they say they have not repented they say they are saints they don't have the witness of the spirit in them that they are born again they say they are saints because they are sitting on the same bench in the church with born again people they say they are saints they flatter themselves look at some of them psalm 50 i'm reading from verse 16. in psalm 50 verse 16 but unto the wicked unto the wicked there are people who by action are wicked and the closer you get to them the more wicked they are to you they do wicked things they say wicked things they act out wickedness and all the people around them they feel the pressure the oppression of their wickedness and yet they say i'm born again i'm a child of god i'm a saint of god they even see in their wickedness when the saints go marching in i'll be there they are flatterers they flatter themselves but unto the wicked god says what hast thou to do to declare my statutes they are trying to preach 
or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Why did God call them wicked? Look at verse 17. It says in verse 17, Seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee. Those are the wicked. They hate personal, penetrating, pricking instruction. They like general preaching. And they'll say, I enjoy the message. But if there is any personal sin, penetrating word that comes to them and discovers their sin or their backsliding, and then God is calling them through his messengers to come out of that sin, they hate instruction and they cast the words of God behind them. In verse 18, it says, When thou sawest it, see, then thou consentest thou with him. That means they want to share the booties, they want to share the stolen money and the stolen property and has been partaker with adulterers. There are the people that will go and fish out and invite the prostitutes and the transgressors for the adulterer uh, to come face to face with them. There are the people that will run errands for their boss in their place of work uh, to go and bring a married woman to them or to go and bring a lady a prostitute to them and they say that's part of their job. That's a bad job. That's a hell-bound job. And God says, what have you to do? To put my name in your mouth since you are a partaker with adulterers. In verse 19, it says, thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth the stage. In verse 20, it says, thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Or maybe we can put sister there against thy sister, and thou slanderest thine own mother's son. You know, there are people, they say they're Christians, and they have hatred, animosity against the brother brother of the same mother and brother in the same family. They say is the one covering my staff, is the one that is not allowing me to make progress and they hate that brother, blood brother, or they hate that sister. They never talk together, they never see eye to eye and yet they come, they say praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm a child of God, I'm a saint of God. You flatter yourself. If you die in that hatred, you cannot be in the congregation of the saints. There are people that hate their wives. There are people that hate their husbands. They even separate. You live by yourself. I've discovered anytime we're living together, there is no peace. And I want to have peace. And so go your way and I go my way. I don't even want to know your telephone number. I, want, I don't want to know anything about you and they slander the wife before the children or the women slander the man before the children. They are just spreading hatred and they are spreading evil. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. In verse 21, it says, These things hast thou done. And I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee. It doesn't say, I'll appreciate you. I reward you. I'll overlook all that hatred. I'll overlook all that flattery. You call yourself a saint, okay? I accept you as a saint. No, it says, I will rebuke you. And then set them in order before thine eyes. In verse 22, 
now consider this ye that forget God the people that have hatred against members of their family that say this is where I stand except he is going to come and prostrate or kneel and submit to my wickedness and to my way of life I will never change I cannot change I don't want to change if we're going to be in good times be a doormat and let me say, let me wash my dirty feet to you all the time that's the only condition that we can be at peace it says such people they forget God it says consider it today and turn around and repent lest I tear you in pieces that there be none to deliver I pray as the Lord is speaking to us directly wanting the best for every one of us everyone will turn totally to the Lord I said everyone will turn totally to the Lord I will, will know here is the will of God the perfect will of God where we'll stand will abide in the perfect will of God in Jesus name now remember he says if you are like that what have you to do to declare my statutes or to take my covenant in your hand you know what that means our leaders may not know what goes on in our private houses and homes if you know that you have hatred or resolve and you have animosity ingrained in your heart and the Lord is saying you don't have a right to take my statutes in your mouth or to declare my covenant our leaders may not know and they can give us responsibility they say brother that's what they think we are you are going to teach that you are going to hold that you are going to lecture that but you know what God says? It's not going to support you because you're not living right. He wants you to drop all that and come to Him in repentance. And then when you repent and the blood of Jesus washes you, number one, you'll be ready for heaven. What's the point of just preaching and preaching, walking and walking, and serving and serving, and being occupied in the house of God, and you're not ready for heaven? Number one, you'll be ready for heaven. And then after that, the work is always there, and you will do all the work, your strength, your energy, and your commitment grants you a chance to do. I pray the blood of Jesus will wash and cleanse every one of us and will remain without any stain without any spot in Jesus name and the people of God said Amen point number three now point number three the firm steadfastness to his covenant God is a faithful God my God is a faithful God your God is a faithful God everything he has opened his mouth and declared unto you he will fulfill in Jesus name I will get something today I must get something today the power of God must walk in your life today in Jesus name the firm steadfastness to his covenant in Psalm 89 verse 34 Psalm 89 verse 34 my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips you can come with confidence with boldness to the throne of grace and then the promise of God praise the Lord today you are going to receive in Jesus name do you remember what the Lord said he said he will send a prophet capital P is referring to Jesus I'll put my word in his mouth 
whatever he says that's what i say all the promises that jesus gave he gave unto you they are the things that went out of the mouth of the almighty god they must be fulfilled and there's so many promises whatsoever you shall ask in my name that i will give you that your joy may be full anybody there joy laughter excitement happiness sorrow is gone suffering is gone neither will i alter the sin that is gone out of my lips. Look at verse Psalm 119, verse 89. Psalm 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And you hear an amen? You know, sometimes you are praying and you are holding on to a promise of God. And then uh, that Satan will come. You may not see him. Uh, and he says, that will not be fulfilled. That will not be done. Don't shake. Just reply him. Uh, you come too late. I said, Satan came too late. Because now I know. And now you know. That the word, the promise... The provision is settled forever in heaven. Amen. Verse 90. In verse 90, thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abideth. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the steadfast firmness in the better covenant. Number two, the sure foundation of the blessed covenant. Number three, the saints' faithfulness to the bridegroom's covenant. Number one, the steadfast firmness in the better covenant. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17, here where in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability unchangeableness of his counsel confirmed each by an oath in verse 18 that by two immutable things unchangeable things in the which it was impossible for god to lie impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the whole set before us God cannot lie what he has said he will do he will do even today I said even today it will wipe out all those tears in Jesus' name. Chapter 8, verse 6. In chapter 8 of Hebrews, reading from verse 6, it says, But now, everybody say now. now. That means today in your life. That means at this present time in your life. No matter the storm, no matter the difficulty, no matter how long that thing has stayed, but now, somebody shout, but now, but now I see you obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises, better promises better promises today for you is done in jesus name look at number two here number two is a sure foundation 
of the blessed covenant, the sure foundation of the sure covenant in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. No storm can shake the foundation of God. No difficulty can shake the foundation of God. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having their seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. I know the Lord. I know him. He knows me. You are not sure of that one. I know him. He knows me. Anytime you pray, don't count yourself as any day can hurry, as just anybody, the Lord knows you. A saint of God, the Lord knows you. A believer, the Lord knows you. A child in the kingdom, the Lord knows you. It says, He leaves every other sinner, and when you are praying, God will pay attention. Yeah. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having the seal, the Lord knows them that are His, and let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's the only stumbling block. And once you depart from iniquity, every other sin will be settled in your life in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number three, the saints' faithfulness to the bridegroom's covenant. He is the heavenly bridegroom. And we are the bride. As the heavenly bridegroom, he will care for the bride. He will care for the believer. He will supply all the needs and the lives of the bride. And the Lord will be faithful to you. And by his grace, you will be faithful to the Lord too. In Jesus' name. And look at Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. Incline your ear. Come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. My soul shall live. Your soul shall live. Everything that is dead. Everything discouraging, the Lord will lift away from your soul today in Jesus' name. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. You can come as an individual. You can come and say, I'm going to have a peculiar, spectacular, special covenant with the Lord, everlasting covenant. And from now until I see him face to face, I know the terms of the covenant and the provisions of the covenant will be available for me. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 tells us, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. When you say, I'm dying, that's not the thought of God. When you say, I'm a failure, that's not the thought of God. When you said, my family is scattered, that's not the thought of God. And when you said, I will never see any good thing, this thing will finish me, that's not the thought of God. Turn over now and get into the thoughts of God. Things are going to become better in your life. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. And then in verse 9, as the heaven for as the heavens are higher than the earth, and my ways and my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And then in verse 10, it says, For as the rain cometh down. 
as the rain cometh down. Look up at me here. Let's say, for example, somebody is uh, standing outside and the rain is coming down. And then he says, he speaks to the air and says, rain, don't come, go back. Will the rain obey? I didn't hear you. Your blessings will come down as the rain. And nobody can stand somewhere, stand in front of your gate, and stand in front of your house, and stand at the backyard, and is looking up and saying, promise, power, provision, don't come upon this person. Is a foolish man, is wasting his time. As the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, and make it to bud, and bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Look at verse 11. It says, So shall my word that goeth out of my mouth. You didn't say your amen? It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish. It shall accomplish. In my life, it shall accomplish. In my family, it shall accomplish. In my profession, it shall accomplish. In my ministry, it shall accomplish. Accomplishment in your life. Fulfillment in your life. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the sin whereunto I send it. Look at verse 12. For ye shall go out with joy. After the service today, and every time in your life, with the covenant renewed in your life, you will always go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. While you are coming, while you are coming, you'll be a bundle of joy. When you are coming, you'll be the highway of happiness. When you are coming, all the good things following after you. And the people that see you, they will not see darkness. They will see light as you come in Jesus' name. And all the trees of the field, everyone, you put joy there. You will share joy there. You will give blessing there. And when you have gone for you and for themselves, because of the sharing of the blessings, they'll be clapping hands because you have passed by in Jesus' name. No sorrow again. No depression again. I'm not downcast anymore. Something good is going to happen to your life today. What are you? Something good. Something glorious. Something great. Something powerful. Something stupendous. Something good is happening to you at this time now in Jesus' name. Why don't you open your mouth, saint of God, child of God? Why don't you open your mouth and say, Lord, here I am. My thoughts are not your thoughts. All the thoughts of evil, that's not the thought of God for you. All the thoughts of defeat, that's not the thought of God for you. All the thoughts of failure, that's not the thought of God for you. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways, says the Lord, as the rain cometh now and is coming down. And is coming down showers of blessing showers of blessing showers of blessing coming down coming down coming down claim the promises of God and claim the power of God and claim everything God has is available for you and the Lord is going to fulfill in your life in Jesus name let God hear you pray and let the heavens hear you pray and claim all the promises of God remember is a faithful God God. He will not fail. He will not alter. Whatever has come out of his mouth, he has spoken good concerning you. 
He has spoken good concerning you. And that goodness will be fulfilled even today. Good things following after you. Mercy following after you. Love flowing, following after you. The fulfillment of the promise following on after you. Your life is taking a new turn. Your life is taking a new shape. And your life is taking a new glory. A new glory. You go out with joy. You go out with happiness. And you will go out with the fulfillment of the promise of God in your life. Why don't you tell him now? Why don't you tell him now? Let all your sorrows be gone. Let all your heart aches be wiped away and let all the tears be totally taken away. You are free. You are free. You are free. The Lord has set you free. You will not be the same anymore. The Lord has favor for you today. Has goodness for you today. All the doubt, let them go away. All the unbelief, let that go away. Everything you ask the Lord today, He will fulfill in your life. He must, He must, He must fulfill in your life. You are a special person, a beloved person in the sight of the Lord. And you are a favored person in the sight of the Lord. He has a covenant with you through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that covenant it will fulfill joy in your heart, joy in your family, joy in the work of your hand, joy in everything you do. That thing that is causing sorrow, my brother, the Lord is taking it away. That thing that is causing heartache, my sister there, my daughter there, the Lord is taking it away. You're not going to be like that forever. Things are different now. Things are different now. Things are different now. Things are different now. Something happened unto you. Sorrow taken away. Sickness taken away. Infirmity taken away. Failure taken away. Disaster taken away. Every evil that the devil has piled upon you, everything taken away, accept. It's yours. You are the favored one. You are the saint of God. You are in the congregation of the saints. And the Lord always does good to his own children. Lord, I believe. Lord, I accept. Lord, it is mine. Things are different now. My prayers are answered. No more dejected. No more sorrowful. No more depressed. No more falling. No more downtrodden different 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 heaven has smiled on you heaven has favored you the faithfulness of God is fulfilled in your life your tears are wiped away your sorrow is taken away It is done. It is done. Brother, sister, I said, it is done. I will not be sorrowful anymore. I will not be sinful anymore. I will not be sick anymore. I will not be suppressed anymore. My star will not be submerged anymore. Come out. Come up. Get on the mountain top. 
let the sunshine of joy be permanent, everlasting in your life, in Jesus' name. Where are you? No more sorrow, where are you? No more sickness, where are you? No more famine, no more joblessness, where are you? No more curse in your life. It is done. I rejoice with you. It is done. Now, after this prayer, I will not say any negative thing about my life anymore. See, now, I will not say I will not say any negative thing about my life anymore. The Lord has answered your prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness and for your promises, and for the good, good things you have promised everyone. Lord, I pray, anywhere there is darkness, wipe it off in Jesus' name. Anywhere there is sorrow of any loss in the past, take it off in Jesus' name. Anywhere there's depression, anywhere there's distress, anywhere there's regret, anywhere there are tears, wipe them away in Jesus' name. Lord, there's a new day now. And Lord, I pray that spring of joy, that spring of happiness, and that turning over come upon every life now in Jesus' name. Where there is sin, forgive everyone. Wipe away every sin. Let there be real conversion, salvation, regeneration in Jesus' name. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let your salvation be real in every life now in Jesus' name. Lord, we remember to effect the covenant of our healing. You were at the weeping post, and by your stripes we are healed. Brother, by your stripes you are healed. Sister, by your stripes you are healed. Lord, I pray any kind of life-threatening disease, I, I command, Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, give healing to everyone that is sick. Spectacular healing. Instantaneous healing. And that sickness will never come back to your life again in Jesus' name. Any oppression, any attack, any affliction of the enemy, I command right now, affliction, attack, come out in Jesus' name. Let every captive become free. Lord, we need poverty, joblessness, unemployment, and weight down on the breadwinner of the family or any member of the family. Lord, at this time, let there be a miraculous provision for everyone. None of your saints will die of hunger. None of your saints will remain leaning on other people, begging other people, brother, sister, boy, girl, son, daughter, you will not be a beggar. You will not continue to be a borrower. Heaven will open its doors and windows upon every one of your lives in Jesus' name. The covenant of God is fulfilled in your life. 
abundance in your life, surplus in your life, adequate supply in your life. You're free. You're free. Free from sin. Free from sickness. Free from satanic attack. And the freedom God has given you, nothing will tamper with it anymore. You go back home now in the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord will always be your strength and source of fulfillment every day of your life in Jesus name thank you Lord because we know it is done in Jesus name we pray